I want to show you how to make this. So this is my uh, visualization of the Earth's tides. So here's the Earth, and these show the direction of the, the tidal effect, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, and I'm going to go through everything you need to know. We're going to build this, we're going to rebuild this model uh, in the code. And so let's get started. Uh, let, me, let me turn that off because it runs sometimes. And I do have a, a blank page, or partially blank right there. Okay, let me show you how we calculate uh, the tides and what caused the tides. So the first thing that we need to think about is uh, what happens when you have a non-inertial reference frame. So imagine that I have this reference frame S0, and then I have some object over here in another reference frame S uh, separated by a vector R. And R is not constant. R, it, this is actually accelerating that way. Well, I can draw a vector like this, R0. That's the location of that in the stationary frame. And then I have this, R, the location in the accelerating frame. And I can see that R plus R equals R0. Now, let's take the derivative of both sides, which that's fine, right? And I'm going to write this as uh, r dot plus r dot equals r zero dot. That's fine. Where dot means a derivative with respect to time. Now I can take the derivative again. That's not a problem. r double dot plus r double dot equals r zero double dot. Now we can make some... Uh, approximations here, right? So what if I want to use Newton's second law in this non-inertial reference frame? So Newton's second law says this. It says that the net force is equal to M, uh, I'll write it as R0 double dot. It says that the net force on an object is proportional to the rate of change of the position, the second derivative rate of this, we call this acceleration. And this, these forces are real forces. Real. That could be gravitational interaction between a person and the Earth, um, a magnetic interaction between two magnets. It can be whatever you want. But real interaction between two things. So over here, if I multiply both sides of this equation by m, I get m r double dot plus m. I'm going to write this as a, where this is a is the acceleration of the reference frame equals r0 double dot times m. But the m. But that's just the force, right? That's the net force. I just said it over there. Uh, so now let me subtract this from both sides. Oh, that's a vector. And I get m r double dot equals f net minus m a. And this is really important here. This says that if I want to be in the reference frame that's accelerating, mass time acceleration is not the net force. It's the net force minus that term right there, minus the mass times acceleration of the frame. Of course, you already knew this, right? If you were right here in an elevator and you push the up button and so it accelerates up, then you feel in your reference frame there's a gravitational force pulling you down there's also this negative MA force pulling you down. And that means the normal force has to be even bigger. But you feel heavier. You're not heavier. You feel heavier. And you could say, okay, fine. All gravitational forces are fake. All gravitational forces are due to curved space time. But that's fine. That's not what we're going to do here. Sorry. I mean, you can do that model. That's fine. I, I'm not going to get mad. I won't even know. Will I know? No, I won't know. Okay, now let's look at the Earth moon system. Now, first of all, uh, let me see if I can find it over here. I don't want to, I don't want to switch to the computer just a second. I want to find it first. Oh, I don't think I can find it. Never mind. So normally if you draw the earth moon system, uh, it would look like this. So here's the moon and then here's the earth like way over here and it's, it's way out of scale. So I don't want to do that. So let's draw a unrealistic Earth-Moon system. Here's the moon, and here's the Earth. 
So the problem is that the moon exerts a force on the Earth. And, we'll, and, well, and let's just talk about this as uh, the gravitational field due to the moon. Okay, because if there's a field, there's a force, right? So I'm going to say G M right there. And that gravitational force is going to cause the Earth to accelerate this way. And you may say, oh, well, it's actually because it's moving in a circle, a really small circle. But yes, it is moving in a circle. It is accelerating. Moving in a circle is accelerating. So if this thing is accelerating that way, this becomes a non-inertial frame. That means that uh, the effect of G at any location is going to be the gravitational field due to the Earth minus uh, A frame. And A frame is just the negative, or A frame is just the, it's going to be, yeah, that's right, negative this. That's, that's G, right? So it's just the, at the center of the Earth. So all I need to do is to find the acceleration of the Earth, which is the gravitational field at the center of the Earth, uh, and then subtract that from the gravitational field right here. So right here, I have, well, let me do it right here. Right here, I have uh, the gravitational field due to the moon is right there. And then the, uh, the gravitational, the acceleration of the Earth is this way, so we get a minus sign right there. And so we're going to get a net effective field that way. On the other side, uh, the gravitational field from the Earth, from the moon, is smaller, right, because it's further away. The smaller than that, so I'm going to get a bigger force pushing that way because it's negative of that, and I get a, a tidal force pushing that way. So that's where you get these two bulges from. But we want to make those all over the Earth. So what we're going to do is to define a function, and that function is going to, we're going to put, we're not going to display the moon. We're going to put the moon somewhere, and then we're going to uh, calculate the acceleration at the center of the Earth, the acceleration at some point on the Earth, and then we can do that for all over the Earth and then make that, that picture. So let's jump over to Python and start making things happen. But it's really not that hard. It's just a difference of accelerations. It's a difference of gravitational fields. So this code right here, I, all I have is the constants in there and I make the Earth, nothing, nothing magic. And there's my Earth. I, I made it partially opaque so that we can see through it and we can see these fields if they're not right on there. Uh, G is the gravitational field, R is the radius of the Earth. This is the vector location, REM is the vector location of the moon. So it's way over there on the negative x-axis. Uh, the mass of the moon, the mass of the mass of the Earth, which doesn't matter. This is the mass of the moon, and this is the center of the Earth, which I don't even ever use, I just assume it's at the center, so put it right there. Okay, so now the first thing we want to do is to make a function that I give it a position and it returns the effective gravitational field. So I'm going to call this uh, a function. In Python we can make a function and I do bad warning, I do bad functions. Bad functions means um, that I don't always, you know, not careful about global variables and all that stuff just because I want to get it done. So let's call this GEFF, -F, effective gravitational field. I'm going to pass it some vector RT. I just made that up. I haven't done anything but say it's going to be RT and RT is going to be a vector. And if it's not a vector and I use it as a vector, I'm going to be in trouble. I'm going to be the one to pay for it. Okay. So Python trusts you and I trust you. Let's trust each other. So the first thing I passed it a vector location. I want to calculate. The first thing I want to calculate is the vector from the moon to that point. I need that vector in order to calculate the gravitational field from the moon. So I'm going to say RM, this is the vector from the moon to my observation location. Uh, is going to be equal to RT, the vector I passed it, minus REM, the location of the moon. So that right there will give me the vector from the moon to wherever I want, anywhere I want. Now I can calculate the gravitational field from the moon. It's just the normal gravitational field. GM is equal to negative G times the mass of the moon times norm RM divided by mag RM squared. That's my gra gravitational field is the, is the gravitational force divided by the mass. I don't care about the mass of the object on the, on the Earth, the water, whatever. It just doesn't matter. That's what I'm going with gravitational fields. So that's GM. Now I need to calculate the acceleration of the frame. So in order to do that, I need the vector. Well, I can just do, uh, I don't need that, do I? Yeah, the vector from the moon 
to the center of the Earth. I'm going to call that RC. And it's just negative REM, right? Because the Earth's at the, at the origin. The, the Moon's way over there, but I want the vector going in the positive X direction. And then I'm going to say AF, acceleration of the frame, is going to be equal to... Uh, why is that? It's... No. This is, this is G... G frame. This is the effect of gravitational field due to the rotation of the Earth, the orbit of the Earth. G times mass of the Moon times norm RC divided by mag RC squared. Okay, that's that's it. Now, once I'm done, I can return the value of the total gravitational field. So I can say return. Uh, re, you guys spell it right. Return GM plus GF, and that's it. Okay, now let's just test that. Let's just test that. Let's calculate the gravitational field on the near side and the far side of the Earth. So I'm gonna say R1 is on the, the left side, I'm pointing the wrong way, left side. It's gonna be equal to, uh, it'd be vector negative RE00 zero zero because the Earth's at the center, it'll go negative radius of the Earth, and then R2 is vector R E zero zero on the other side. And let's just print out those two gravitational fields. Print G effective R one, print G effective R two, and let's see what happens. Okay, that looks good. So there are my two gravitational fields. So the one on the left is pointing to the left. The one on the right is pointing to the right. Okay, which I'm, I got my arrows backwards because of the way I had my camera. And you will notice something that, that we often say that the bulges are equal, but the gravitational fields on the two sides of the Earth are not the same. The one on the side to the, uh, close to the moon has a larger magnitude than the one on the other side. They're very close, but they're not the same. Okay. And that's true. It should be that way. So, but also we can get this 10 to the negative 6 thing in there because I need to, if I want to draw an arrow to represent the gravitational field, uh, I need to scale it. So let's see if we can just make two arrows. So I'm gonna make two arrows. Let's call this thing T scale, and I'm gonna say one times 10 to the 11th. I don't know. And I'm gonna make an arrow. Uh, its position is an arrow object. Its position is gonna be R1. Its axis is gonna be equal to T scale times GFFR1. And let's put one on the other side, arrow, position equals R2, axis equals T scale times GFFR2. Let's run that. Let's see how big those arrows are and maybe we need to make them bigger or smaller. And you could, and see, I can't even see them. There, there's one right there. And there's the other one, but they're tiny. So let's make those bigger. Let's make this 10 to the 12th. Okay. That's a little, let's make that a little bit bigger. Um, I don't remember what I value. Let's use 3 times 10 to the 12th. And this is fine. You don't have to calculate it beforehand, but that's a little too big. Let's do 2. It's art at this point. It's not physics. Okay, so now I don't want those arrows. Now what I'm going to do is say n equals 20, theta equals 0, d theta equals 2 times pi divided by n. So what I'm going to do is to have a vector location um, using theta. So it's going to be cosine theta, sine theta, 0. And then I'm going to increase my value of theta until I go all the way around the Earth. And at each point, I can draw an arrow. So let's do that. So while theta is less than 2 times pi, uh, number 1, find that location. I'm going to call it RO for observation location. It's going to be the radius of the Earth times the vector cosine theta, sine theta, zero. Now I want to put an arrow there. I don't give, need to give it a name. I can just say arrow position equals RO, no RO for observation, not zero. Uh, axis equals G effective RO, RO times T scale. And let's give it a color, color equals color dot yellow. Do not ever run this yet because if I don't do the next step, theta equals theta plus d theta, it will just run forever and then that's a long, long time. Uh, I think that will work and I think we'll be done.
yeah, there you go. There's your title picture. Uh, you'll notice something really cool. The the bulge is pulled to the moon's over here, over over that way, right towards towards your left. Uh, and so you get a bulge on both sides of the moon. That's what you should do. The, the gravitational fields are pulling that way. At the Earth, it gets squished inwards, right? That's true too because I have the acceleration vectors that way, and the uh, the moon pulls that way, so that causes it to squish in. And you can't tell it from here, but but these are a little bit smaller than those. And so since it's opaque, you can see that, and you could zoom through it if you want, zoom out. It's just all fun and games. Way better than what you see in a book. Um, but we're going to make it even better. Because what if I want to have arrows distributed over the whole thing, like I said before? Well, now let's go down here and do this differently. I'm going to just comment all this stuff out. I'm going to comment this stuff out in case you want it. So, uh, what is it? This is the comment for a block? Yep. Okay. And I'm going to say n is equal to, let's see if n is 20. n equals 0. So what I want to do is to make 20 random points, 20 random points uh, in my uh, region. And I want them uniformly distributed over a sphere, and that actually is a little bit difficult. Let's just make 20 random points in a box that's negative re to re, negative re to re, negative re to re. So I'm going to say while n is less than n, so that's going to be my counter, I'm going to make a random vector position. ro equals uh, re times vector 2 times random minus 1, 2 times random, minus 1, 2 times random, minus 1. So in this version of Python, we have limited options for random numbers. Random returns a number between 0 and 1. So if I multiply this by 2, now it's between 0 and 2, and I subtract 1, I get a random number between negative 1 and 1. And then I multiply it by the radius of the Earth, now it's between negative radius of the Earth and radius of the Earth. So I should get uh, 20 random points in that space. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm not going to draw a sphere there. I'm going to put an arrow there. So let's put an arrow there, just like we did before. We could draw a sphere, but I don't really care. Uh, and now I'm going to say n equals n plus 1. And that's 20. Let's do 200. Why not? Be bold. Run that. And so there's my, but see, now they're not, they're just randomly distributed all over that cube. And that's not what I want. I want them on the surface of the Earth. Now, I can't put them on the surface of the Earth, but I can put them in a range on the surface of the Earth. I need a shell. So let's make a shell. So let's say down here, uh, dr equals 500 meters. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to generate a random variable. And if that variable is between... Uh, the radius of the Earth minus dr and the radius of the Earth plus dr, then I'm going to make an arrow. Otherwise, I'm just going to throw it away. So I'm going to make my random thing, same, same right there. Now I'm going to say if mag ro is greater than the radius of the Earth minus dr and mag ro is less than the radius of the Earth plus dr, then I'm going to keep it. So I'm going to, I'm going to make this arrow and I'm going to count. So I'm only going to get points if they're on the surface of the Earth. If not, I don't even count that. I'm not going to count it. And so it's plus or minus 500 meters, which is basically the surface of the Earth. It's just a picture. It doesn't matter if it's not perfect. Boom. And that's 200 points right there. Okay. So then in, in my uh, first thing, I had 500. Um, I think I'm going to make these a little bit smaller just when there's a lot of arrows I feel like they should be uh, a little shorter right there and this is actually something uh, that we call it's not it's not calculating the things for the tide this is called art okay I've just made some physics art and that is pretty cool and you can make it too it's not even that hard you see that's not that much that's not that big of a program we can do that so there you go there's your Python tutorial on tides. I now just need to think of a nice title that everyone will like. How to visualize tides with Python. Code will be down below. <laughs>